How has the uh, terror threat changed here in France since this, this uh, huge bloodshed was committed nearly six years ago? Well, the tactics have changed, but the hatred for France has not changed, as we can see from the several dozen attacks that have taken place uh, since uh, November 2015. So why has France been singled out? Well, I would suggest because of the principle of secularism, which is enshrined in the French Republic, secularism being the separation of religion from civic affairs. And uh, extremists see French secularism as a cover for anti-Muslim policies and anti-Muslim discrimination. And obviously, that sense of, of grievance uh, that is used uh, by recruiters in the Middle East to try to get jihadists to uh, to commit attacks in the West, but it's also the same sense of grievance that uh, jihadists in France feed on when they, uh, you know, get radicalized, as, as, as the phrase goes. And of course, there's this feedback loop, feedback loop as well, Tom, in the sense that every attack uh, prom prompts a response from the French state. Uh, for example, the law against, quote, separatism. Uh, that law was, was strengthened after the beheading of uh, uh, the schoolteacher, Samuel Petit. And of course, the so the, the fact that there was this sort of, um, you know, uh, strengthening of the law that was seen by extremists as further proof of anti-Muslim policies. So all these things sort of reinforce each other and they're seen as, as kind of retrenchment. And uh, so, of course, uh, all of this makes for a continuing uh, narrative against the West and against France in particular. And this is, of course, all kind of tied into some other world news that's been taking place. Recently, we've had the Taliban takeover in uh, Afghanistan. That's a situation that could well uh, provoke or trigger uh, other attacks. But, Armin, uh, more widely speaking, what are the current conflict zones that we should be uh, monitoring or looking out for? Well, the, the, the caliphate was officially declared over in March uh, 2019 when the Syrian Democratic Forces uh, liberated uh, a town, uh, the town of Baghouz, and that's when officially the, the caliphate was declared over after several years. Uh, but of course, we know that militants move from one battlefield to another, so quite a few ISIS fighters went to Libya. Uh, whenever there's chaos, a vacuum, they'll try and fill a vacuum elsewhere, particularly if their uh, home territory, so to speak, has shrunk, as it did in Syria and Iraq. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the uh, ISK franchise uh, that uh, grabbed these global headlines by uh, carrying out that suicide attack at, at Kabul airport. So uh, when the IS group, while the IS doesn't have the territory that it used to have, it certainly has... Uh, territory elsewhere. It ha has pockets at the very least. It has franchises in uh, Africa. Uh, and of course, this uh, attempt to strengthen its presence in Afghanistan as well. And what ISIS has kept uh, very much alive over, over these years is uh, the sense of the near enemy and the far enemy, the near enemy, those who are, you know, local officials that are seen as colluding with the West, such as Afghan government people or whatever, but also the far enemy being uh, Western countries themselves, which of course remain a target. Okay, Armin Georgian, our international